pay me one. Oh no, you got the bag. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> roller. You don't want to trade, man. So you don't want to trade. Tabo dealt with that last week. Uh, <laughs> my first time seeing this. Remember day seventy-one. Meditators are bound to be more intelligent than other people. If they are not, then their meditation is false, and they don't know what meditation is. They are doing something else in the name of meditation. A meditative person is bound to be more sensitive, more intelligent, more creative, more loving, more compassionate. These qualities grow of their own accord, and the whole secret is in one thing, learn to stop the mind. The moment you know how to stop the mind, you become the master, and then the mind is a beautiful mechanism. You can. You use it when you want to use it, when it is needed, and you turn it off when it is not needed. This is really deep. That's the whole passage? Yeah. I definitely, a uh, word that sticks out, and I know y'all gonna be like, oh, here we go. <laughs> well, meditation, you know, it, I, I will say it definitely makes you more sensitive. And I don't mean sensitive in like a soft way, but like more in tune. There we go. It's done. <laughs> but it makes you more in tune to other people mm -hmm. and what's going on around you. Like I can sense that, you know, it could be something that's how somebody says, oh, how are you doing? I'm okay. Like you can sense that. Mm -hmm. Versus just using the mind. Like they said they was okay. <laughs> By definition, that means they were okay. So. But it's like, no, they're not really okay. Like, like Chris in the best, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? Alright. <laughs> According to Sifu, that means do two more. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> of it, eating, be conscious of it, thinking, go on watching the thoughts passing in the mind. One day you will be surprised when you have learned the knack of watching, it continues even in sleep. You go on watching the dreams, you know what kind of dreams are passing by, and you know that they are dreams. That day when one can watch one's own dreams is a day of great transformation. From that moment onward, you are a new being, then you enter the world of reality. By watching dreams, thoughts, desires, slowly, slowly we become the watcher. We become disidentified with all that we are watching. We become witness. And that witness is the ultimate reality. Watch. Could you uh, elaborate on that? I mean, it's obvious what it says, but man, I feel like it's probably a part of it I just don't understand. Like, you're watching, but that's the ultimate reality, I would think personally the opposite, like you're living it and you're not, I, want, I mean you're aware but you're in a different perspective, like you totally participate and you're engaged in it and that's the reality versus somebody who's watching it but I may be wrong <laughs> you saying being a witness so, like watching that's a, that's a passive place to be at, right? yeah what I take sorry, from I interrupted it, what I take from it um, when he says watching, I feel like living, living is like a state of being. When I, when I hear him say watching, I think of meditating, like in a state of full awareness, but not necessarily concentrating. Like to watch something, you kind of have to concentrate on it mm -hmm. because our eyes work from our mind processing what we see. Whereas in meditation, we just kind of take it all in without necessarily being part of it, but more so being one with it all. I guess I said that right. No, I, I get what you mean. I mean, technically it would make no sense, but you're, you're part of it by watching it. Like, you're experiencing it while watching it, but you're not actually, I guess, um, <laughs> basically aware. That's, that's what Sifu said, and that's the word that kind of triggered, I guess, the connection. 
Like by watching it, you are living it. <laughs> you're witnessing it, so you witness it from a different perspective. There's a concept that I probably mentioned to you all in my earlier days here that um, I was trying to um, make it more real, but it's kind of time consuming. Visual movements or mental visual movements like um, the phoenix going through it in your mind, but yet you are still going through it in your mind when you have the uh, wooden dummy in front of you, but to have the wooden dummy in your mind there, but not physically there, is something that I'm still tussling with. You know, it's kind of like the Matrix with Niels in the, in the chair, mm -hmm. and how he had learned what he had learned through the visual that he was seeing in his mind. Okay. So, when he, so when he came up against Morpheus, that he was able to deflect and react according to the way that Morpheus was coming at him. I'm still, um, I believe that is possible, but I still haven't gotten the, um, uh, with the um, glasses that I bought since I would go to work. <laughs> it's like, I, um, but I'm still tussling with that phoenix in my mind. But it's so time consuming, I have to find a bit of patience and peace in order to do it. But I think it's coming. It's uh, somewhat progressing. So he's talking about watching. So he's saying when you're walking, be conscious that you're walking. When you're eating, be conscious that you're e eating. Um, when you're thinking, be watching the thoughts. So when you're conscious, you know, that means you're aware. So like you're aware of what you're doing. So when you're walking, you're engaged in what you're doing. So when you're watching yourself, walking that means you're engaged in that mm -hmm. and you're not thinking of something outside of what you're doing so watching your dreams to see like if you're watching a movie you're not identified with the movie like you, you know that you're watching the movie like so you can see it from the outside so he's saying like kind of like look at yourself that way everything you're doing remain a witness and that witness he's calling awareness so um, he's saying that when you get stronger in meditation you're gonna be able to witness everything and not be identified with it mm. so that you don't know, say you feel the pain in your your arm you could just witness to see okay this is what's going on this is there's this pain in my arm like you're just witnessing it. You're not like accepting it. You're not identify. He's not say, he's saying you're not identifying with it. So if you're watching a movie and something happens in the movie and somebody dies, you're not like you're like you're not like in the movie yourself. You're watching the movie and you just you just witness it going on. You know, so when you're engaged in it, then you're not a witness anymore. So like when we're in here, out there in the front, and then those people are fighting out in the front, we're witnesses. Mm -hmm. We weren't engaged in it, but Chris <laughs> wanted to get engaged. <laughs> <laughs> but why was he engaged? Wait, no, you're just trying. This was real. Yeah, this was real. But say we're going through some life struggle, you know, you lose your job or something, you can witness it. But you don't have to be engaged in it, attached to it, and you know allow it to throw you off balance. So you're watching a movie, and the person in the movie loses his job. You can just witness it. You don't have to be engaged in it. How do you get that over there? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's almost like being conscious of even your thoughts. So in meditation, you're meditating, 
just uh, witness the thoughts that are going through your mind. And then that he's saying that that witness is is the ultimate. That's the thing that's eternal. That's the thing that has no age. So he's talking about that that same witness of when you're like 10 years old is the same witness uh, to this date that has no age to it. And he's saying once you get used to when you identify that and you can keep practicing, then that is like that's the way. You know. Okay. So like that um, the DiCaprio movie or dreams, speaking about dreams. Inception. Yeah. yeah. Said we become disidentified with all that we are watching, we become the witness. And that witness is the ultimate reality. Alright, if you look around at the so called religious lives, one thing is certain every religion has been destructive. And has hampered people, obstructed them, made them so afraid of everything that the small joys of life, even drinking tea, become a sin. Drinking water in the night becomes a sin. Once you start moving in the direction of making things into sins, you cannot live, you only drag. My approach is totally different. There are mistakes, but there are no sins at all. There are errors, but no sins. And one can commit errors because it's only through committing errors that one learns. Only one thing has to be remembered. Don't commit the same error again and again because that is stupid. One should explore life, and in exploring, sometimes you go astray. If you are too afraid of going astray, you cannot explore. Then the whole adventure of life is crushed, killed, destroyed. And that's what so-called religious people have done. They have made religion so serious, so somber. They have given religion such a long face. My effort is to give you joy and gusto for life, courage to be adventurous, to move fearlessly, exploring all the possibilities that life makes available. Fearless and expanding and being open and vulnerable because God is our judge and we need not be afraid. Finally, at the judgment day, when you see God, you can tell him, yes, I've been drinking. Please forgive me. I've tried a few other things also. And I think we will, he will understand. Don't be worried. Mm -hmm. Don't be worried. <laughs> <laughs> can't feel for everyone. Yes, <laughs> can <laughs> No, um, God, I could drink it. <laughs> <laughs> God answers like, and I might have tried some other things too. <laughs> I, I tried this. I said that I might have tried some other things too. Because I've been drinking, I might have done some other things too. <laughs> 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 But that's the thing that makes um, Buddhism to me, not that I'm perfect, but um, they don't give you thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Though they do have the five precepts, you know, so far as um, drinking and fornicating and so forth, you know. But it says, through practice, you shall reach an understanding, and that being nirvana, where you're able to. I guess let go of the um, the um, attraction that you have to doing certain actions that can stem to I guess illicit practice, <laughs> and, and that I find um, so you know because like I said I've been down a couple of alleys and then you get tired of all that stuff <laughs> you know drinking smoking. Call him, yeah, baby. <laughs> so, 
you just you see see things in a different uh, I guess a different light, and I guess that comes with age. You know that you just don't do what a young young mind does because you have a, somewhat of an old mind, but you're able to reflect and appreciate it. You know when you used to we used to live for, live for the weekend or work for the weekend. One thing I can say about it all is all religions, you know, even including like my belief, the only thing about the thou shalt not is the last four are pretty universal, you know, and every single belief on the planet can agree to that unless you're like, well, no, I can't even say that, never mind. Some people, might, some people might think killing and stealing and stuff is beautiful. Like just ten. <laughs> I mean, I gave you a benchmark off both what you and you participated in. Um, I mean, it's a universal thread. Just I believe in living beings. And I mean, we as living beings, of course, human beings, having uh, religious beliefs or practicing religious beliefs, or what mm-hmm. have you. There's a word in Buddhism, and I don't know what it is, but it means to forget. Like, I think instinctually we know right and wrong, but we tend to forget, <laughs> you know, sometimes. And sometimes we do remember we still do wrong anyway. I'm mm-hmm. not saying that's an excuse. But uh, I-, I think that's... Uh, the truth, like you said, this universe, you know right and wrong. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, you know not to just kick a random dog yeah. <laughs> down the street. It's just like, okay, well, maybe maybe Y doesn't know not to kick a random dog. <laughs> maybe he forgot that part. But, uh, <laughs> in your path, otherwise. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> but certain things that cultures are considered wrong, like, oh, well, women should wear her a jobby or something like that. Other parts of the world, it's like, why not? But, you know, everybody has their reasons or if, you know, oh, well, you don't eat on certain times of day, and that might be a sin according to other people, but. You know. I find that Buddhism gives you an allowance you know, I'm an allowance so far as, you know, it's, you know, because you're going to be tempted or whatnot. But eventually, do the temptation after a period of time, it becomes like old. And you just, you know, realize what it's, what it's all about. Underlying, you know, you see a pretty woman, but unless you got your pockets full, that's what they're looking for. You know, so you're not going to inspire her too much if you ain't got nothing in your pocket. And you ain't got that, you know, necessary wherewithal that she would smile about. You know, and want to be part in your world as you want to be part in her world. And over time, you just recognize that um, it was it was good when I was younger. You know, we used to go and hang out with the 23 and older crowd when I was 19, partying. And I was, you know, I, mean, I never got to refuse admittance, but, you know, um, that became old. You know, and I just right now reflect. I live a very adventurous life. <laughs> I haven't been up to the beach since 98, and I live a block away from it. I ain't been to the theater since the Passion of Christ, and that's right on the corner from it. <laughs> I just I just I just sleep and bathe here and I go right to work. <laughs> just by just just be out of not 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 any re- other reason than that? Not not not, not having any interest in no, okay. you know, venturing out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't any other interest. Once I get in the house it's all good. <laughs> Matter of fact, I walk past your 
Evanston. <laughs> it was cheap. The shit this other one was a, was a library and I had to go up to downtown Evanston. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that my cousin, my nephew worked there, some part of it, you know. But uh, when I ran into that seven-foot guy, I was like, I got to do something. I can't, can't stand for intimidation. You know, although I'm not going to get anybody else here. <laughs> I said, what, ten years? I ain't had you here, Michael, but there was a seven-foot guy coming for you? No, he was like, get up off me. I was like, I looked up and all I saw was the sky. How tall is this? I was like, oh, Lord. You look up and you see nothing but a cloud. You can't see it. I didn't see it. I saw his legs and fish in front of me. I didn't see it. I was like, this is animated. I was about to get polarized into the surface of the CTA platform. He started talking with this water started coming down. He started raining up. I did a, a walk of paint on the, on the field. I grabbed the ball, swooped around, turned around, ran up to my head, ran up. And then I saw him the next day. He was homeless, but he was a former basketball player because when he sat in the seat, his knees came up uh, at least about um, six inches above the chair. Did you say he was homeless, but he, he was, was a former yeah, he, he he basketball player? Yeah, he was uh, about seven, about six something, if not seven feet almost. But. You know, he had on the jersey of, you know, playing the sport of basketball, but he was curled up in the, in the, in the seat as though he was, you know, he had been sleeping there for a while. <laughs> you know, of course, I could have grabbed onto the railings and jumped up and just started stumping him while he was sleeping, you know, but <laughs> that wouldn't have been too right, right? <laughs> All on candid camera. <laughs> but um, I just chose to recognize and approach Sifu, and so far he's lived up to his word. He hasn't, he hasn't beaten me up. <laughs> so you want to hurt me, will you? <laughs> so, <laughs> last thing I want to do is come out here with something broken, you know? <laughs> I already, I already got enough problems walking and walk like Caesar at the end of the month. It's time to go see the foot doctor and so forth. Oh Lord, you know, yeah. So far, so good. Thanks for the crew here. Y'all are a good, good group of guys. Especially you, for you, my brother Shen. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris. <laughs> Do not go by that name. <laughs> <laughs> why? 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 I'm but sorry. I'm 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 sorry.
I want to study for. It's hard to drop the old, but it has to be dropped because only that is a new possible. It's hard to accept the new because it is new and we are unfamiliar with it. It is a stranger and deep down we are apprehensive and afraid. But one has to learn to love the new. Otherwise, no growth is possible. Growth simply means the courage to drop the old and the courage to love the new. And this is not to be done only once. It has to be done every moment because every moment something is becoming old and something new is knocking at the door. Whenever that is happening, listen to the new and become utterly deaf to the old. The old functions as bondage, the new brings freedom. Truth is always new. Existence is always fresh. As fresh as the dew drops in the early morning sun. Alright, so now you do a uh, sitting on this thing here. Get a rock back and forth and push your toes. And you're gonna roll it until it goes to your neck. So you're gonna use your feet to to, to walk forth, put your arms up, roll to the neck, and repeat it. Go back to the sitting position. Terminator when that Terminator was half a robot and it was crawling. <laughs> nah, this is a bit unusual. Once you get to the ankle, you gotta roll up. No, 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 Let's 
people ain't gonna be looking for this stress <laughs> room. <laughs> My girl had to do this, she'd be crying right now. Uh, she has done it before, you said she did. If she had, if she had to do this right, she'd be crying. <laughs> my wife broke the bus with me. I yeah, said, yeah, that was good. Why you were driving? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Man. That's great. I'm like, finally, somebody see the madness I go through. Can yeah, I get to stop and go to Wendy's? No, we ain't do all that. Actually, she showed up. I'm doing it super thorough. Yeah. Sign some paperwork for this house. Oh. Congratulations, y'all back on it? Uh, yeah, we got pretty much ah. the neighbors. I'm looking at Hillside. Well, I got a contract on the house at Hillside. Ah. Yeah, I left out of Bellwood temporarily. Yeah, I know. You were in Bellwood? Yeah. You like my, some of my weekly gigs? Where at? Touch of the past. Oh, oh touch of the past, yeah. Straight up. Dude, you guys gotta come, man. Oh, wow. I just said that. Now I gotta come. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I've never been in there since I lived in Bellwood. Ah. I thought it was like, I am 25, I don't know. So it, might, it might be one of those, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, from what I know, it was just a bunch of old players going in there, so I just stayed out the way. They have like parties in there, like if you have a birthday, you can throw a party there. Right. It's pretty decent. So you go on, you said Sundays? Every Sunday I play with the Midnight Sunday. Man, come check it out on Sunday. Ten feet, funk, arm, be so covered, man. Right? Put a request you in at the second like set. Right here, you your knees and your hips. <laughs> Say again? You supposed to feel like something in your knees and yeah. your hips? Okay. I'll be honest, after that first time, it don't bother me, man. I just roll right there. <laughs> <laughs> feels good, though. Roll right through. No, it's, I'm not going to say it feels bad, it's uncomfortable, it's just like, you get touched in place, like, I don't know, I don't know how it's going to feel. <laughs> as long as you have time to go like, first, child. That's too easy, you get that one right there. That's too easy, give it to me. Really? Oh, man. I need to stretch out to you today. I thought, I used to think driving a bus is an easy gig, it's not. <laughs> Your little girl's cussing me out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it? Uh, no, I'm just joking. I'm just being humorous. Uh, uh, I can see it in their face. They want to cuss me out. Bus <laughs> uh, uh, drivers are cool. Some of us. There's a lot of AO. I ain't gonna lie, I had an encounter. Did I tell you? No. Oh, man. I'm on the most wanted list for the 330 <laughs> in the Grinch. Really? Yeah, man. I cracked the bus driver window. Damn. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. About a month ago, but it wasn't even like, 